Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about filter pipeline in Web API. What problems it's trying to resolve? Why do we need it? How do we use it? And then let's see some examples of using it. Then some more details about using the filter pipeline. All right, let's jump to the code and get started. So in each controller method, what are the tasks that we need to do? We need authentication and authorization. We need some generic validations that is very related to data. We need to retrieve the input data. We need to validate input data. We need to implement some application logic to format output data. And last but not least, we need to do exception handling. If we look at these tasks, they are not really related. Each one of them is trying to resolve a very different problem. And our developer's main focus is here, the implementing the application logic. In other words, from software design point of view, the cohesion is very low. So in order to solve this kind of problem, Microsoft has come up with a solution to extract these unrelated functionalities outside of the action method and put them in a filter pipeline so that each filter solves a particular problem and this pipeline is very similar middleware pipeline. So then the question comes, why don't we use middleware pipeline? Why do we have to use the filter pipeline here? Well, after routing, once the routing middleware finds the action method that it needs to route the HTTP request to, the rest of the things are actually MVC related. Things like model binding and validation, things like formatting action results, they're all specific to MVC application framework. Therefore, if you create filter pipeline, you have access to the MVC construct, for example, model state, action results. Middleware in the middleware pipeline, they don't have access to the MVC data construct. So that's the first difference. The second difference is that middleware will have to be applied to all of the action methods in all of the controllers. There is no way to say that I want to apply this middleware to a particular action method. Whereas in the filter pipeline, you have the flexibility of either applying the filter globally or to a particular controller or to a particular action method. So this is Microsoft documentation filters for SP.NET Core 3.1. So once after routing, the request enter into the filter pipeline. And there's built-in filters. You can even consider the model binding as a filter. And then the action, action execution is a filter. And the result execution are also a filter. Those are the three that are built-in and have to be executed in order to complete the process and returning, getting the input and returning the output. The rest of the blue ones are in the middle. Uh, they're optional. For example, you can use the built-in authorized filter as an attribute to decorate your action method or your controller, or even globally to configure authorization. And then we have different filters at different places for different functionalities. The resource filters happen before model binding, so it doesn't have access to the input data yet, whereas the action filter happens after model binding. Therefore, it has access to the input parameters. Exception filters kind of wrap around model binding, action execution, as well as action filters. If there are any exception thrown around these three filters, you can use exception, exception filter to handle the exceptions. Result filters can be used to apply some custom formatting to the results. And then when everything is returned, it goes through the resource filter again and goes to the, to the caller of the web API. Therefore, the usages of the custom filters are authentication and authorization, generic validations, data validations, exception handling, and formatting results. So these are the custom filters. You can create your own authorization filters, but I don't recommend you doing that. The authorization filter that comes with SP.NET Core is already very powerful. 
Again, the resource filters here, it's not only for generic validations, but it's mainly for generic validations, which I'm gonna demonstrate a little bit later. Action filter is mainly for data validations, but again, you can do a lot of different things in there. Exception filter is for exception handlings, and result filters is for formatting results. After implement and applying these filters, you can extract any logic that is unrelated to the application logic at hand results in a high cohesion controller and a bunch of high cohesion filters. All right, let's jump into the computer and do some demos. First, let's add a folder here and let's call it filters. And let's add our first filter. It's just a class and let's call it debug filter, debug resource filter, it's indicating it's a resource filter so that we know at what stage it's gonna get engaged. And it needs to implement the resource filter interface. Um, I'm gonna do control dot to import namespace, which is MVC filters. And in order to use it as an attribute, it also needs to derive from the attribute class. And here, because we're using an interface, so we have to implement the interface. So I'm just gonna choose this. So we see that it has two methods that we need to override right, or implement, the executing and the executed. And if we take a look at the documentation, you can see the resource filters has input coming in and output going out, right? Both input and output has to go through resource filters. So these two methods corresponds to those two aspects. This executing one, is when the resource is coming in, the input is coming in. And this one is when it's going out, All right? So let's move this to the top so that we don't end up confusing ourselves. And all I wanna do at this point is I want to log to the console. So I'm gonna say console dot right line. And then here, we're gonna use context. We're gonna say uh, string interpolation. We're gonna say context dot action descriptor dot display name and then we'll say is executing and copy this and paste over here. We're gonna change it to is executed. And if we run this, we change this because we're trying to do console dot right, so we cannot use IIS. We can use the application itself, which is gonna use the Castro server and that will launch our console application. You can see it over here. And this is the browser. I'm gonna type in uh, API slash product. Oh, so we go back. We haven't applied this yet. To apply this, we come over here and we use the filter on top of the controller to apply it to all of the action methods. And I'm importing the namespace. And I'm also gonna comment out this first action method because it's gonna be conflicting with this one. And now we are all set. I'm gonna run it again. And we see API slash products. And we see it returns this and it has a uh, error message, right? This is because of our validation that we applied from the previous episode that we have required for, for the name. We didn't provide anything, but that's fine. We're focusing on this. So you see it has two lines print out, right? It's saying this get by object is executing and get by object is executed. We are going to create another filter and this is going to be a action filter. We're gonna see which filter is executed first. Let, and this one, let's call it debug action filter. And let's derive from the action filter attribute. There is a built-in class, so we don't have to de implement the I action filter interface. So let's stop debugging. And then we're gonna overwrite the on action executing. It's the same concept because, because you can see that for the action filters, it also goes in and comes out. And that's why it has a executing. Uh, and also a on action executed, right? So it has both. 
And similarly, we're going to output this and then we're going to say context dot action descriptor display name. And again, we're going to use string interpolation and we are going to say action filter and then we'll put this inside. I'm going to say is put a space here is executing copy this here and we change this to execute it. And because of this, we're going to come over here and also use square bracket to decorate this. We're going to say resource filter at the front to distinguish between the resource filter from the action filter. And now we have the action filter here and we're going to use the action filter also on the controller. So I'm going to say debug action filter control dot. Oh, okay. So it's already implemented the, uh, imported the namespace. Now let's execute it. And then we're going to slash API slash products. And you can see that, that it only retain, return those two lines, which is the resource filter here. And the action filter did not execute. Why? Because the model binding and validation filter here failed to validate. Therefore, the pipeline is short circuited and returns right back from here into the resource filter and going out. So in order to fix this problem, let's re-execute and provide better input. I'm going to say ID one and name is my product, something like that. Let's see whether it works or not. All right. So now we can see that we have these four new lines added. We have get object executing, which is resource filter. And then the next one is not the resource filter. It's the action filter for executing. And after that action filter executed. And then after that is the resource filter. And that corresponds to the filter pipeline because the resource filter comes in first and then goes into the action filter and then goes out of to the action filter and then goes out through the resource filter. So that's why you see resource filter locked first and then action filter locked second and then again the action filter and then again resource filter. So now let's talk a little bit about the scope of the filters. So you can apply the filter on the controller. Of course, you can also apply the filters on individual action methods, right? Those are two different scopes. Also, you can apply the filters globally in the startup file. So if you go to the startup file and then you go to the configure services and then you come over here to the add controllers. This is injecting all of the dependencies that the middleware uses the endpoint middleware uses. So in here, we can add the options, configure it to add the filter to the filter pipeline globally. So we can do things like this. And then we can say options.filters.add. And then we can add that. Uh, let's say we want to add the resource filter here, right? So, and that's the debug resource filter. We can add it this way. And then I'm going to do control dot to import the namespace. And so if I have it here, that means this resource filter is applied to all of the controllers and all of the action methods. So that's why I can come over here and delete this and then I can run. And then let's actually change the action filter to apply it to the get by object only, right? not get by ID. And then we'll see the difference. Let's run it. All right. Let's trigger the get by ID API action method product one. Then you can see that only the resource filter is applied. But if we're using this API slash products, and then we provide the ID as well as the name, then we see that both the resource filter and the action filter are being applied. So this tells us that the debug resource filter is applied globally across all of the controllers, all of the action methods. So this is the scope of the filter that you can apply globally or on the controller or on particular action method. Now, what if I add another resource filter, right? Let's go ahead and add another 
debug resource filter. Stop this. And apparently I made a mistake here. This is supposed to be a filter, so I'm gonna drag it over here. And this will filters. And I'm gonna add another filter. I'm gonna call it debug resource filter two. Debug resource filter two. And this one again is gonna implement resource filter interface as well as attribute. And we're gonna implement the interface and we are gonna copy from here. And this one, we're gonna say filter two, and we're gonna change the original one. We are gonna say filter one, and then let's execute it. And then now let's trigger the get by ID so that we are only seeing the resource. So we're seeing that we have resource one triggered and then resource two, and then resource two and resource one, right? This is corresponds to the pipeline because resource filter is, it has both inbound and outbound traffic. So this tells us that the global filter executes first. Global filter is the filter that we applied in the startup file. So this filter executes first, and then the one that you apply on the controller executes secondly, right? And if we create another one, I'm gonna copy this and paste it over here. I'm gonna change this to filter two, filter three, and change the class to filter three, and change the logging to filter three. And we're gonna apply the filter three to the method. So here, I'm gonna say debug resource filter three. And then we'll try again. So now trigger the same method. So we have one, two, and three, and then three, two, one. So this tells us that global filters execute first, and then controller filters execute secondly, and then action filters. Well, the filter is applied to an action level, it's executed afterwards. But what if we want to customize the order of the execution? So that's easy. We can implement the I ordered filter interface. Okay, and then it's an implement interface and it has a order. So here, okay, so if you want the attribute to be executed early, then you want the number to be smaller. Let's say I want this one to return three. So I'm gonna put three over here, okay? and then I'm gonna do the same thing for number three. So I'm gonna implement the I ordered filter, and I'm going to make this one execute first, which I'm going to make it to minus one. So now let's also apply the order filter interface, um, the second filter, and we're gonna put this one in the middle so I'm gonna set it to zero. So let's double check. We have filter three returns minus one, filter two returns zero, and filter one returns number three, right? Whereas filter one is actually applied globally right here. And filter two is applied on the controller and filter three is applied on action method. Okay, so let's run it and see what the result is. I'm expecting that filter three execute first because it has order minus one, right? And then I'm expecting filter two is exe being executed secondly, and then I'm expecting filter one is being executed at the third place, despite scope of these filters are applied differently. So I'm going to trigger the API, the got by ID, and then we can see that number three is applied in the first place, and then number one, and then number two, right? Uh, whereas according to the to the filter scope, number one should execute first and then number two and then number three. So we can use the I order filter to override that default order. And let's call the other one. Let's call the product um, providing the ID and name. And now let's look at this again. Because in this case, we don't have the resource filter three because resource filter three is applied only to get by ID, not by, not get by object. So we're seeing resource filter one executed and then resource filter two because the order set so. The first filter has zero as the order and the second one has three as the order. And then the action filter uh, and then the resource filter two and the resource filter one. 
So no matter how you apply the order, you're not going to change the stage. Okay, so the resource filter will never be executed after the action filter. So this is about the ordering of the action filters. All right, that's everything I want to cover for part one. From part two, which is the next episode, I'm going to cover some realistic examples of using these filters. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my video tutorials, please give it a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next episode.